I'd like to start this video with just a quick apology that I haven't uploaded a video for this series in a while. I know we're very close to the end and I apologize for taking a break at this moment, but let's not waste any more time and get right into the video. In the last video, we finally added some UI to our game to kind of tie together this progress feel that we've been going for. And now it's time to start focusing on the more gameplay related features, such as a game over system. In this episode, we're going to be working on just that, creating a game over that actually allows our player to fall off the map or bump into an obstacle and restart the level and try again. So to get started here, we're going to go over to our blueprints folder and we're going to right click in here. We're going to create a new blueprint class. We're actually going to have to search here at the bottom for what we want. We're going to look for game instance and it's going to be this first option here. Game instance, not platform game instance. This is just the generalized object itself. We're going to create this. I'm going to name this BP underscore game instance. Now, before we even actually do anything with this, I'm going to just save all. We're going to come up here to settings, project settings. We're going to come over here to maps and modes under project. We're going to come down to the very bottom under game instance and game instance class. We're going to set to our new BP underscore game instance. Whenever we get our game instance, it's going to refer to this BP game instance class. We can close the project settings. Now we're going to open up our game instance. We're going to start off by just creating a custom event in here because this is where we're going to hold all of our information about the game that is kind of generalized. So we can consider this kind of our game manager. The only reason we're using a game instance instead of just another actor blueprint like I did in my example is so that we don't have to keep placing it in every level. This will always be referenced as the game instance no matter if it exists in the scene or not, which it actually can't because it's not a placeable object. In this graph here, we're just going to right click and we're going to search for custom event and we have add custom event right here. We're going to give it a name. This is going to be end game. So whenever we die, whenever we hit something, whenever we fall off the map, we're going to call this event. We are going to add a sequence of events after this later, but for now, let's just print a string. We can just say game over. There we go. We can compile this and save this and then close this blueprint. Now we're going to go ahead and hop back into our player here. So just open up our blueprint player and let's find our component hit. So this is whenever we hit an obstacle, we're already telling the player that we can't move, but we're not doing anything beyond that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a node called get game instance. Under game here, we have get game instance. We're just going to get that. And now is where we get into another example of casting. This is just a general reference to the game instance. It's not actually specifically referencing this blueprint. So we have to get this actual game instance blueprint. To do that, we're going to take this game instance reference here and we're going to cast to BP underscore game instance. And there we go. We're checking if the current game instance that we're using is of type BP underscore game instance, which it will be because we defined it in the project settings. And now we're going to do what I brought up last time, which was get information from this cast node. So that event that we just created, which was end game, we're going to pull off of this pin here as BP game instance and look for end game. You can see call function. We're going to call end game and it'll automatically hook up the execution pin and the target pin here. We just move this in, make it look a little bit cleaner. And there we go. As long as the game instance that we're currently using is of type BP game instance, we will be able to end game and run whatever functionality is off of this end game event, which we can access if you just double click on this end game event, it will open up our BP game instance again, and it'll bring us to where this event is and then what it's doing when it's called. So right now, basically what this is saying is that once we stop moving, we print a string because that's what the end game event is doing is printing a string. We can test this out. I'm just going to close both of these. Now we can play. And as soon as we bump into something, it says game over in the top left. But what about falling off the map? Right now, it only works if we bump into something. But if I fall off, nothing ever happens. And there are a few different ways we can do this. In my example project, I just did it based on the player's Z location. Remember, this is a Z up engine. So if the player ever falls below, say, negative 250 units, then we would run that end game event. But there's another way we could do this, which would be by bringing in a trigger and setting it up to where it's below the ground and really, really big. There are a bunch of ways we could do this. So say this is our death plane, and then we would just drop it wherever we want it below the ground. And then whenever we collide with this trigger, 
will run the event, but because we're going to be using a trigger to create our win state, I think it's better to show that this other option exists as well. So let's go ahead and open our player again, and instead of working down here by the component hit event, we're going to come up here to the event tick again. We're actually going to move these bottom two functions here down a little ways, the move sideways and the component hit. We're going to move them down. You can just highlight everything and then click one node and drag it to move all of them together, just so we have some space here. Now off of the second sequence here, the then one of our little sequence node here on the event tick, we're going to do a constant actor location check. So to do this, we're just going to hold B and left click to create a branch. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm just going to connect this then one execution pin up to the execution pin of the branch. And for our condition, we're going to do a little bit of work here. We're going to first get actor location. But what actor are we getting the location of? Well, the player, which means ourself. And as you can see, it's already referencing self. So we don't need to hook this up to anything. If you wanted to, you could look for self and get a reference to self and then plug this in. It does the exact same thing. Just to make it easier though, we don't need to connect that up. We're also then going to pull off of this vector here and we're going to break it. You could do this if you wanted to keep things consistent with the way that you're breaking vectors. But another way to do this is just to right click on this vector pin and split the structure pin. It says split struct pin and it'll split it up into the three values that you need. That's what I'm going to do just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. And what we're checking is if the Z value ever gets below negative, say, 100. So I'm just going to pull off of this and I'm going to press the less than sign. And you can see we have float less than float. And that's what I'm going to use. If the float is ever less than negative 100, that's our condition, then we will do something. If it's not, we're not going to do anything. But if we ever fall beneath negative 100 units, we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to end game. We're not just going to end the game though like we did down here because if we did this it's just going to immediately end the game without ever stopping our movement and what I'm going to eventually do here is add a little bit of a delay before we actually restart the level so that way it gives us a moment to kind of pause as we stop our movement so what I want to do is I want to stop movement and then end the game which means instead of just doing this I'm going to copy both of these together in fact I'm gonna condense this a little bit first so I'm gonna copy this here I'm gonna bring this up top and paste it. There we go. I'm going to hook up the true to here. So now it's always going to be checking if our actor's current location, our player's current location is less than negative 100 units on the Z. And if it is, we will stop movement and run the end game function based on the game instance. We're going to compile this and just close this here. And then we can test it out and we can see that now if we fall off, it says game over, but it says it a bunch of times. And this could cause some problems. Maybe not necessarily in our case, but it could. So right now, if we bump into something and only says it once, but say we bumped into something, bounced and hit something else, it would say game over twice. And if we fall off the map, it's going to say game over a bunch of times. So just to prevent this, let's go ahead and open up our BP game instance here. We're going to create a variable over here on the left. It's going to be a Boolean variable. We're just going to call this game has ended. I'm going to disconnect this print string here so we can just right click on the execution pin and break all pin links. I'm going to move this up and out of my way. And we're going to create a branch here just by holding B and left clicking. I'm going to connect up this execution pin here. We're going to drag in our game has ended while holding control to get it and just connect up this to the condition here. If the game has already ended, then we don't want to do anything. But if it hasn't ended yet, then we're going to first tell it that it has ended. Drag in this variable from the left. The game has has ended, hold alt and drop it to set it. Or you can always just drop it and then click set. We're going to connect this false up to the execution pin here. And we're going to make sure that this game has ended is now checked and true. By default, the game has not ended. If we compile and we click on this variable, we can see by default it is false. Whenever this end game event is run for the first time, it's false. So now we're going to set it to true and run whatever comes after. But now every other time this is called, this value is now true. So nothing will ever ever be run. It's a sneaky little trick to run little checks like that to make sure instances only ever run once. Of course, you could use a do once node or something like that to make sure it doesn't happen. I think this is just a nice little trick to use. Now let's go ahead and connect this print string back up one more time just to see this in action. So now if I play and I fall off the edge, it only shows it once, even though it's technically being called constantly. Same thing were to happen if I bumped into something and hit something else afterwards. It's already been called once, so it will not be called again until until that value is reset to false. Now, instead of printing a string, let's actually set up what we need to do here, which is quite simple. First of all, I want to add a little delay so we can see ourselves kind of falling back for a second. I think 
literally one second is a good amount. We can change this if we'd like to. And now we're going to restart the current level. And to do this, we're going to get an open level by name node. But before we do this, we need to know what the name of the current level is. And we can do this by getting the node get current level name and just select that. We're going to hook up the execution pin of the completed for the delay here. And then we're going to hook up the execution pin of the get current level name to the open level. And we're going to let this do a conversion from string to name. And that's it. Now it's going to open whatever the current level is. Why this current level name is returning a string but asking for a name value, I do not understand, but it works. So that's all that matters. Go ahead and compile and save. And now whenever we hit an obstacle, it bounces for a second and restarts the level. And same thing if we were to fall off the edge we restart the level. But the problem is, if I bump into something now, you can see it's not ever doing it again. And that's because we're never resetting that value. And that's where the value of having a game manager object in the scene comes into play, because all of its values will reset whenever the scene resets. But in our case, we have to do a little bit of extra here if I open up our game instance again. After it has restarted the level, we need to once again set our game has ended to false. That way, it can be called again. But only once the level has been restarted. So now if we compile and close and play, we bump into this, it restarts the level and we do it again and it restarts the level. Same thing if I were to fall off the level, it'll restart. And there we go. Now we get to play again. This looks a lot better. It works a lot better. And now we actually play the game, but there's still no way to win it. So if we go past the entire level, we beat it. We do everything we need to. We just kind of go off into the distance, presumably forever right now, even though this plane does actually have an end to it. As you can see, our score keeps going up and there's no point where the screen fades and gives us a menu and we actually move on to the next level. In fact, we haven't even created a next level yet, but now whenever we fall off the map, and bump into obstacles, we actually restart the level. That's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to finalize some of the gameplay features in our game, such as the win state, but then also finishing up things like UI. So having a main menu, a game over screen, a next level screen, and a credits screen. That sounds like a lot, but we're going to be able to tackle all that in the next video because we're just that close to finishing this project. Thank you guys for the incredible support you've given me throughout this series, and I hope to see you in the next one.